Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And today I'm just gonna be doing some plant chores. I've got quite a lot to get through before I'm going away for a week next week, so I've got quite a lot to do before then. And I guess this is the sort of stuff that I tend to kind of do off camera, so I just thought I would bring you with me for it. And if you've got stuff that you need to do as well, then feel free to do it along with me. But yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So I thought I'd just start off by giving you a little update on my Anthurium clarinervium seeds that I pollinated and then planted up. I tried them in quite a few different ways and I'm not gonna take you through all of them now just because I am gonna make a full kind of summary video on it at some point. But I've got the ones in moss here and if you're on my Patreon then you will have seen these already. But these are the ones that I, I germinated in the dark and these are the ones that I just did normally in the light. And there is a really big difference. So, Okay, I'll start with the ones actually that I did as I would normally do, just in like standard lighting conditions. And if I can get in there, you can see that quite a lot of them have sprouted. There's quite a few that haven't as well. And they're doing they're doing pretty well. Like I, I think I'll get some lovely plants out of them. But if you compare them to the ones that I did in the dark, and this really kind of blew my mind because as I say, I've never done it in the dark before. But if you look in there, not only have all of them sprouted, they are a lot more mature and they've really sized up a lot quicker. And as I say, they are in exactly the same substrate. The only difference between them is that these seeds germinated in complete darkness and those ones didn't. So yeah, when I when I come to germinate anthurium seeds in the future, I will definitely be doing the seed germination in the dark. I have heard that obviously with seed germination, a lot of it can take place in the dark because they don't need light until they've got leaves but I never thought that it would actually kind of have so many benefits. So yeah, that was really interesting to see firsthand. But so with with my plant chores, I'm, I'm not gonna kind of think about this too much. I'm just gonna go about things in the way that I would usually do. And I'm focusing really on this kind of kitchen living room section for this video because I want to kind of sweep through these, deal with things that need doing and feel a little bit more on top but I'll usually just kind of start at one side and work my way around so there's also some things that aren't doing well uh, but I'm going to start with the plants on top of my fridge I'm just going to get them down have a look at them I'm aware that there are some issues with these plants that I would like to deal with so yeah let's have a look at them Okay, so the first thing is actually, I think, fairly positive. My variegated ivy that I tried to propagate in moss is actually putting out quite a lot of new growth. And I didn't really expect this plant to do anything. I did actually recently lose the mother plant because it, it just wasn't doing well at all. And I decided to take some cuttings and hope that they might propagate and the other ones all failed. But this one seems to be doing fairly well. So I've just got it in a jar at the moment. Oh, and I can see roots at the bottom, yay. So I'm just gonna fill up a little bit of water in the jar. I don't, oh, I mean, I've put kind of like a centimeter of water at the bottom there, and I think that will probably be okay. Ideally, it wouldn't be touching the roots, but also I know that, especially on top of the fridge, it does get quite warm, and I don't want this to dry out and completely die off in the time that I'm away. So I'm gonna take the risk and I'm gonna do that. And then my Pothos Marble Queen is, I think, looking fairly good. She doesn't tend to really give me much grief and she's been in so many different spots in the time that I've owned her and she's been fine pretty much everywhere. I um, I did do a pest check of all the plants last time, last time I did my watering, which was for these ones, I think about a week and a half ago, I took some of them down and there's no obvious issues here. I know I have got pests in some other areas of my home and we will get to that. But I think in general, she's looking fairly okay. She could do with the water though. So I'm just gonna get all my watering stuff set up. So I've still got some water in the bowl from 
some watering I did earlier today, so I'm just gonna pop that back in. I know I've said before, unless I discover pests on a plant or a fungal issue or root rot or anything like that, I do tend to just reuse my water because especially when it's nice fertilized water, it just seems like a bit of a waste to, to not use it. Also, I just realized my dishwasher's on and I'm not wearing my microphone, so I'm just gonna turn that off because otherwise, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me. Um, but yes, for those of you that might not know, this is how I do my watering. I just really like doing it this way. This is just an oven grill. I'll put it over my washing up bowl so then I can collect the water and that allows my plants to drain. And then I'll just put my plants on, give them a thorough drenching. And then I'll usually let them sit and drain while I'm checking the next plant. And the next one, I'm I'm really sad about this. So this is the blue star fern that I got from Emma. And as you can see, it was doing so well, but to be honest, I don't think that spot up there is right for it. I think I need to find a different spot because as I just said, it does get really warm on top of the fridge. And this is a plant that likes to stay quite moist and it has just completely dried up and is not looking good at all. So. I'm gonna give it a prune back. I'm gonna give it a proper soak through, give it a pest check, and then I think I will have to find a new spot for this plant. In fact, I say give it a prune back. The leaves that need to come off are actually just detaching themselves quite easily. This is totally my own fault. I should have, I should have relocated this plant sooner. It does seem for a fern quite robust, so I'm hoping it will bounce back, but meh, it was doing so well before I moved. Okay, so obviously it's still very floppy and quite sparse, but I think, I think if I give it good water and as I say, find a better spot for it, then that should be, that should be okay. I'm thinking I'll probably actually put that one in my bedroom because my bedroom doesn't get such bright light and that plant doesn't need very bright light. Humidity is fairly good in my bedroom and it's definitely on the whole cooler as well. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll just let that drain for a minute and then I'll put it to one side and do that shortly. And this is a really sad one as well. I think a lot of the plants on top of my fridge, well, a lot, these two specifically, I've just kind of shoved there and I've been like, I'll deal with them later. And I keep not dealing with them. And this is actually looking better than it was. This is my Begonia Elbow Picta, which again, before I moved house was doing brilliantly. I tend to be really bad with begonia and this one at one point made me think that actually no, maybe I'm not bad with them. Maybe maybe I just haven't had that greater luck in the past. But this plant since I have moved has stressed me out so much. It's lost pretty much all of its leaves. I've had to chop it completely back. Again, I think probably that's just not the spot for it. So again, I might relocate this plant. But the positive thing is that I can see it is putting out new growth, which is good. That's very encouraging. But um, yeah, I was gonna say also, it doesn't look pesty or anything, but it's very, very dry. So again, maybe this will turn into a bedroom plant as well, even just in the time that I'm away so that it doesn't dry out so quickly. Oh no, one of its new little leaves that I thought was just the start of new growth has just fallen off. Okay, right, yeah, relocating this plant as well. I'm gonna put the ones that I'm relocating over here and then I can find spots for them after, after I've got through everything else. It does just happen sometimes. I think as well, I'm, although I've lived here for November, December, January, February, Mm, hang on, November, December, January, February, March, almost six months, or five and a half months, let's say five and a half because I moved at the end of November. But there's still like, because I knew my plants in the old space so well, there's still a lot of 
adjusting that they're kind of doing and I'm still figuring out a lot of stuff with them. And some plants as well, they can look quite robust and I can kind of be used to the way that they do things, but they're, sh they're slower to show signs of kind of going downhill. So I think some I've just assumed have been fine because I thought they were hardy plants before and it's just taken several months for the signs to start showing. So I'm still, I'm still figuring it all out. I'm sure I will get there, but it does just mean that there are, there are some issues going on here and there. But this one, my Sansevieria Metallica, this is one that I really just don't worry about. I put this one pretty much anywhere I put this one, it's gonna be fine. And it doesn't need much water. I haven't watered this one I'd say in about a month um, and in fact I should probably group some plants with similar watering leaves up there on top of the fridge as well in fact maybe I should do like all Sansevieria up there because it doesn't get great light um, so I think all of the plants I've got up there at the moment are the ones that I know can survive in slightly lower light I say that I've also got a crystallinum that's not looking very happy it's not looking awful like it has got some lovely growth and in fact it's giving me some new growth but as you can tell like looking at that leaf it's just not looking as good as it could be it did have thrips really really badly about two three months ago it was just before just before christmas so oh my god <laughs> december like end of december time i had thrips and i had it isolated but it still does have quite a lot of damage on the leaves but that being said, it has done quite well up there in that spot, despite it not being the highest light spot in the world. So I could say I'll swap it out, but I think I'm probably for now anyway, gonna leave that one um, and just change up the other plants in that area a little bit. Yeah, it does otherwise look okay. Yeah, I need to figure out what other plants I can now put up there. Aglaonema and stuff like that, I think would probably work quite well in that spot because again, they don't need the highest light and they are quite drought tolerant. So maybe I could swap some of my aglaonema for that bit. Hmm, I don't know, I'm gonna put them back anyway. I'll think about what plants can go in that gap later. I'm just gonna plow on through for now. I'm also running ridiculously low on liquid gold leaf. I've got like a drop left in the bottle. So not all of these plants are gonna get fertilized today. I'm just gonna try and get the dregs out. Oh, <laughs> that just went all over the floor. <laughs> I'm gonna just try and get, oh my goodness. Okay, don't shake the bottle there, right. That's gonna have to do. Uh, and then I will order some more for when I get back because obviously we are now, well, you wouldn't believe it with the weather, but we are now technically in growing season. It is the start of summer. Dear Lord, that makes me so happy. I cannot even explain. I am such a sun child. Like I love the sun more than anything in the world and it just gives me so much energy. And your plants start growing again and it's it's just the most wonderful time it makes me so excited so fertilizing around this time makes me really happy because i feel like it's just encouraging them to do the best they possibly can but it's going to be limited today so right i've got all of my hanging ones to do that takes a lot of time can i be bothered to do that right now or do i want to start down here think I want to start on ground level and then make my way up. If this is a really long video then I might carry on with this over on Patreon just because I have a feeling that this is going to take quite a while but I'm gonna start down on this level and um, I've got so my uh, one of my Tradis Cancha ivory hill cuttings I'm just training it up on the wall at the moment. I'm using those little twisty clips that I always bang on about. Um, and it's just propagating in water. It's got, you can't really tell in this light, but it has got some really nice roots. It's definitely ready to be potted up. And I did actually think about potting up some propagations in this video, but 
Again, just because I'm about to be away for a week, I just kind of thought I'll leave them another week and water is not gonna hurt. And it just means that I won't have to worry about things drying out or adjusting or anything like that in the time that I'm away. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. I also just really like the look of it going over my cooker. It just adds a bit of greenery and it doesn't seem to have been burnt or anything. So that is good. Uh, and then I know that that's fine. Um, I've got a little Sansevieria Victoria whale fin here, which I know again needs a repot, but I think I will wait until I'm back. And then this is another thing on my to-do list that I've been saying I'll do for ages. I've got these um, philodendron brazil cuttings and these are the bits that broke off my mother plant when i was moving and they're really well rooted now and i'm gonna pot them back up with the mother plant and just try and get her a little bit fuller again because she's looking very sparse and leggy at the moment but again i think i'm gonna wait until i'm home whenever you're going away it's just a good idea in my opinion at least to not do too much stuff like to your plants apart from like the necessities like not too much repotting nothing that's going to alter their environment too much just because if stuff does start to go downhill or if they don't adjust in the way that you want them to then you're not going to be around to monitor it so i'm gonna just try and keep this simple i feel like as soon as i get the camera rolling i start to over complicate things a bit um this is one of my very little philodendron silver swords, which had a very stuck leaf, hence this weird little gap. I did actually lose that leaf, which was a shame. Um, and in fact, you know what? I said in the video with Emma the other day, oh, hang on, or is that the leaf? I said in the video with Emma that we filmed that philodendron silver sword doesn't have pronounced caterpillars in the same way as other philodendron does. And I'm looking at this bit here and I'm, trying to figure out if that was the leaf that snapped off which maybe it was or if that's a caterpillar i don't actually know because i know one of you commented saying that yours does seem to have pronounced caterpillars and i found that very interesting um who knows who knows but yeah the grand plan with all of my silver swords is to pop them up together and make one massive one just because I think it would look so beautiful. I love my silver sword, my big one so much and if I could get her even bigger and even more beautiful then I would be over the moon. But that being said I do quite like having little ones just dotted about here there and everywhere so I guess maybe I could just continue to chop and propagate. Uh, but this is the Aglaonema Cutlass, and I haven't actually been turning this one. You can tell she's very kind of flat at the back, but all of the growth seems very happy. This is the sort of plant that I would usually rotate quite a lot because obviously it's not vining, it is very 360, but it seems fairly chilled like that. So I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna mess with it if it's not complaining. This actually had a water the other day. It's just a little pillia peperomioides. Uh, me and Emma repotted this one. Um, but it's already feeling quite dry. This is a pot that I've decorated, but it is actually terracotta. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go and give it a water again just in case. It is still a few days before I go away as well. And I can't remember if I actually said in this video or not, but I was kind of hoping that everything would wait, <laughs> would just kind of hold off a little bit so that I could water it at the last minute and it wouldn't have to go an extended period of time without water, but it never really works like that, does it? And to be honest, I'm only away for a week. It's not worth getting someone to come in. Um, so, so yeah, I'm just doing what I can and I think they will be all right. Also, my Maranta lemon lime cuttings are doing so well. And I'm so happy that I did chop this plant as well. I know I said that the mother plant perked up, but then she went downhill again and I now don't have a mother plant. So this, this will be the new mother plant. And just look at the roots on that. They're both really well rooted. And I've got another couple of cuttings in my bedroom. So again, once I'm home, I'm gonna be getting a brand new mother plant going, which I'm really excited about. I'm gonna pop them all up together. 
Oh God. You know what I've just found? Look at that. That is a big mealy bug. Oh, gross, 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 gross. I don't, on the whole, touch wood, suffer with mealy bugs a lot in terms of the fact that I've never had like a big infestation. But I know with plants like Marantas, they are just the worst because they get right down. In fact, I should probably have a little check. They get right down in these little bits and they can bring the plant down so quickly. I can't see any others, but I might put that to one side. I know I'm gonna have to do a wash of some other plants that have got thrips and I might just give this one a proper scrub. Oh, right, okay, putting that to one side for the moment and um, I'm gonna just have a check of this one as well. Please don't be anything. Okay, this one looks to be absolutely fine. It is the most stressful thing in the world when you find pests right before you go away because obviously they can just spread like wildfire. And the last thing I wanna do is to come back to a huge massive infestation. And this is one thing that I'm a little bit stressed about as well because I found adult thrips in both of my cabinets. And although I use predatory mites, they work really well for like the larvae, the immature thrips, the light colored ones, but the dark adult ones do need something a little bit stronger. And I can't actually, I can't get any delivered in time. So I think I'm gonna need to order a load of blue sticky traps and do like a, a horticultural soap wash and hope that that is enough to keep them at bay whilst I'm away because thrips again they're the worst they're asexuals they don't even need more than one thrip to reproduce so if you miss one they'll just cause havoc so please keep your fingers crossed for me i don't want to lose all the plants in my cabinet that would not be a good thing to come home to and i've got lots of i've got some scandapsis argoreus cuttings in here and i also put a monstera peru cutting in there which i don't think has started rooting yet, but all the others are rooting really nicely. So again, more popping up to do when I'm home. And also, God, this is why I shouldn't film and do plant chores because I get so distracted. Um, but my friend as a moving in present got me this gorgeous picture. Oh, can't really see. There we go. Gorgeous picture of Yoli. I think it is the most adorable thing in the world and I love it. Um, but next, I've just got some more water propagations and this one I think can probably go in the bin. I tried to water propagate some rosemary because I wanted to try and get, oh yeah, it's going mouldy. Um, I wanted to try and get a rosemary bush going on my balcony and I know you can buy them as full plants, but I was just like, I'll try and propagate it. If anyone knows about the best way to do this, then let me know because, ooh, yuck, this obviously has not worked. Um, but I know it is possible, so yeah, if you've got any any suggestions, any tips there, then please do let me know. Um, and again, if I turn the camera around, I've got another Tradescantia Ivory Hill cutting there that I've just got with a little clip on the wall because I like it upright. Um, again, it's really well rooted, so it will be able to make a new plant, but along with the other one. But for now, I'm just going to top up its water. And then just below it, I've got a Monstera Pinata Partisa cutting, which I'm propagating. And this is the one that me and Emma actually um, pop potted up in our, if you saw the short form content of us putting our hands behind each other, we potted this one up and then unpotted it because the root felt a little bit sludgy. And as you can tell, it does, especially towards the end there, it does look healthy, but maybe it's because it's just such a hairy root. It, it kind of felt a little bit rotty. So I've put it back in water and I'm gonna just take a proper look at it again at some point. Um, I think seeing as it seems happy in water, I think for now I'm just gonna leave it. Um, but then I've just got these two left here. Oh, I can see things. I can see things with both of them that need doing. So my Aglaonema Silver Queen, as you can see, does have some yellowing, which is quite unlike this plant, to be honest. She usually doesn't really give me any issues at all. So I am going to give her a pest check. Her soil, actually, I mean, it's not that dry. I think I might leave this one another couple of days. Um, what day is it? 
yeah, I'll, I'll water her the day after tomorrow, just before I go. Um, but I am just going to give her a pest check because this is, as I say, very out of character. Aglaonema is such, on the whole, such hardy plants. Again, it could just be some long-term adjusting going on. As I say, I know I have been here for a while, but it does take a bit of time sometimes for them to show any signs. Is that a thrip? No, it's just a bit sore. And she is giving me new growth as well, which is encouraging, but... Yeah, I can't see any immediate cause for concern. I'm just trying to really like look like on the stems and in between all the like, I hate the word clusters, but like clusters of stems on the plants where it's quite compact, just because if there has been a mealy bug in this area, then there could be more and you often can't see them at first unless you really kind of peel the stems apart. Okay, I can't see anything to be worried about, to be honest. So considering the rest of the plant looks really happy and healthy, I'm not gonna worry. But my Anthurium clarinervium that was next to it, this one, I mean, I've always found clarinerviums really, really easy. And this one, since I've moved again, has just really not been happy. I struggle with pests. As you can see, it's still got some thrip damage. It does still all look to be fine. I know it needs a water, but I've just lost quite a lot of leaves on this plant, which I'm really sad about actually, because it was doing, doing so well before I moved house. But I think obviously with the brighter, the longer hours of light and the brighter weather, hopefully coming soon, that is gonna mean that a lot of my plants are a lot happier. Whenever I see bits of perlite on the stem, I always think that they're mealy bugs and it always freaks me out, but I think this one is also okay. It's so easy to overlook thrips on dark leaf plants because especially if they're adults, they are so dark themselves. So sometimes you can't really see them, but I think she's all good. Um, and the next one that I need to do is my big Monstera. And I will bring this one over here because it's very hard to water in situ. Um, but it's always a little bit of a mission. And doing that with a tripod here as well may make this even harder. Whoa, she is so heavy. Oh, yes, yeah, you can tell this one is just kind of like growing at the speed of light at the moment. And she's giving me the most beautiful new leaf but it's taking a really long time up. Oh, great timing Yogi. <laughs> Hello. No 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 yeah this new leaf is taking a really long oh my goodness hello a really long time to harden off and I'm not quite sure why again oh my god I know that the light isn't as good as it was getting before. Yummy but I also just want to give it give it a pest check and give its leaves a little wipe over. Uh, Yogi's apparently gonna help with this. No, Yogi, not for you. So I've just put the washing up bowl underneath it. And because this one does take quite a while to drain because there's so much soil in there, I always just kind of use that as an opportunity to do the pest check, do the leaf wipe, all the things that need to be done. And I've also got my mister spray bottle here, which I absolutely love. It's like an aerosol mister. And I've just mixed in some liquid gold leaf photo plus with it, which basically helps to increase photosynthesis in plants. And for plants particularly like this one that is still going through quite a big lighting adjustment and are giving me new growth, it's just really great. So I'm just gonna give it a really good, really good spritz with that. And hopefully that should help to just kind of maximize the light that it's getting.
this stuff does occasionally leave slight watermarks on the leaves to be honest i don't really mind about that but if it does bother you you can just wipe them off afterwards but seeing as i'm gonna be away for a bit i'm not gonna worry about that come on drain please while that's draining, just because it usually takes some time, I'm just going to give my variegated Monstera a water, a check over, a dust and a spray because she's literally, I would say probably one of my lowest maintenance plants at the moment, which you wouldn't really have thought, but like, I don't know why, I just don't really do anything to her. And she's also one of the only plants in my collection that I water in situ. I don't obviously bring her over to water. I just got a drainage tray underneath her, but I feel like I've got quite good touch wood at judging the amount um yeah she definitely weren't ready for a drink so i'm just gonna give her a really good soak yeah she doesn't look pesty but she is in need of a really really good dust it's been quite a while to be honest since i gave her a good dust just because it takes time and I can be very lazy. <laughs> also such a shame at the bottom here, I've lost quite a few leaves and there is quite a bit of damage just because Yoli, Yoli's tail goes without saying, has just whacked them to pieces, but there's not really anywhere else I can put this plant where I think it would be happy. So it's just kind of, it's just a given that that's gotta happen if I want the plant to be healthy. And as you can see, the growth at the top of the plant there, if I move the camera up a little bit, is really kind of coming off to the side. And that's the point where I chopped her before when she was really ridiculously big. And I'm like, do I extend the moss pole? Do I let her continue to climb off? Do I keep chopping her? I haven't really made a decision yet, but she's going a little bit crazy. So if any of you have any thoughts, then do let me know. Um, but my Monstera here is, I would say, fairly well drained now. So I'm gonna pop her back in her spot and then I'm gonna continue. never remember the name of this aglaonema but this is another one that i think is just really beautiful it's quite dusty again or in fact really dusty i don't know if you can see all that dust coming off it that is not good um but it's another one that never gives me any grief and i really don't do anything to like barely i water it maybe like once a month or something and yeah it's just such such a relaxed plant and i do love i know i made an easy plants video recently i do really love having some plants in my collection that I don't have to do a lot to because I, although I love plant care, I love having so many of them that if all of them were like as high maintenance as an alocasia, for example, then I just, I'd just just be never stopping. So I really appreciate plants like this. In fact, this is another one that would probably work quite well on top of the fridge. I could, I could put it up there, although then the only thing is when you look at it from below, it doesn't look as pretty. You kind of want to be looking down on it. So I don't know. I'll rethink. I haven't actually, I said this, I said this the other day, but I haven't actually bought any new plants for myself in months. It's, it's almost April now. So January, February, March, April, four months. That's really good going for me. Not that I'm actively trying not to buy plants i think i've just kind of at the moment i feel like i've just kind of reached capacity like for what i can cope with and for what is still enjoyable like i have had points in my life where i've just gone way too overboard and i just felt completely overwhelmed by my plant care and i feel like in general at the moment this is manageable but it's teetering on <laughs> some days being a little bit unmanageable so I am genuinely thinking that I'm probably going to get rid of a few plants soon I know the plant spots coming up and I think oh I'm, I'm mm, yeah I've got quite a few plants that I am going to be 
getting rid of like full plants or big plants that I'm going to be chopping up because I do want to add more plants to my collection but I think until I've had a little bit of a clear out which is something I haven't done in years like I don't think I've I don't think I've got rid of a full plant mm. that could be a lie but I, I don't, off the top of my head I don't think I've got rid of a full plant in a very long time and I think just having a little bit of a spring clean the ones that aren't bringing me as much joy anymore giving them two better homes and then just being able to go back to focusing on the ones that are making me happy is a good idea. So I'm definitely gonna be doing that. I'm really happy to be able to say that I am currently successfully growing an alocasia in, uh, it's not actually pond, this is Soil Ninja's pond equivalent, but I am successfully growing in semi-hydro because it's something that I have never been very good at and it's always freaks me out a little bit. And Oh dear God, it's making life so much easier. So I'm genuinely considering giving lacquer another go and transferring quite a lot of my plants at some point. Um, but yeah, ones like this, I just, I'm not worried about at all in the time that I'm away. Even if I was going away for longer, I don't think I'd be worried. So yeah, that's definitely, definitely something on my to-do list. And the Alocasia, or what was its name? This is the one that I got fairly recently when I went to Gavin Green. Uh, it's known as a oh, something elephant ear. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I'll put the name on the screen. Um, but this one, I, I've put it in a ceramic pot, which obviously doesn't have drainage. And I'm going against all advice that I would usually give. I'm not going to take it out of its pot to water. I'm just going to monitor the bottom. I have actually been a bit naughty. I've started doing this with a few of my plants now, especially if... Like, I don't know what it is about the soil, it just seems a little bit hydrophobic and maybe it's just because I'm not used to it, but yeah, it, I feel like it could be a bit messy if I take it out. Like, I don't know if you can see the water's just currently kind of sitting on top a little bit. Oh, there we go, it's soaking in. So yeah, I'm just gonna take the risk and do it this way, but I feel like it will be fine, if I'm careful. And then obviously if there's loads of excess at the bottom of the pot, I can just pour it away. I feel like that is the right amount. And it has also given me this new leaf, uh, not that one, that new leaf has unfurled in the time that I've had it. And it is so soft because the rest of the plant's quite robust. That is literally the most delicate, softest leaf because it hasn't hardened off yet. And I'm really hoping that this one will get huge. Like they look amazing when they're big. Um, but then my philodendron ernestii, this is one that needs a really good dust. I was looking at this, I was filming a video the other day and I was talking about the importance of dusting plants' leaves. And I saw this one out of the corner of my eye and I was like, I am not taking my own advice here because this one is very, very, very dusty. I did give it a pest check the other day and it was fine. But I'll just double check again before I go in with my gloves also just hydrate its moss pole. I don't think the actual plant is going to be ready for a drink yet. I did water it I think last week but yeah that pole if you can see yeah the water's just kind of balancing there that pole has got very dry. I think when I go away because obviously I don't want my moss poles to dry out I think I'm going to wrap them in cling film like if I make sure they're really hydrated the day before I go and then I cling film them so that not a lot of moisture is going to escape. And then I just make sure that the heating's down, maybe move them a little bit back from the lights. I think that should be fine for a week. I mean, it could actually do with a drink. I'm quite surprised about that. Um, but it's quite good because when it does need a drink, I can literally just water the whole thing from here and it doesn't really matter if it goes into the soil. And it's the easiest way to hydrate the moss pole. This one has now as well started to get some really good aerial roots. Like if you look at the back of the pole there, they're really starting to form. It's really gripping on. And I'm hoping that again, kind of come, I keep saying come summertime, it is summertime. Uh, when the weather picks up, it should start giving me some beautiful growth because this one was really fast when I lived at my mum's but obviously it was getting a lot more light and although I know that the plants should in theory be getting a bit more light now obviously I, I can't keep all of my plants 
right next to the window even if I wanted to so it's just had to adapt and it's adapted really well but I have just noticed that its growth has slowed right down so hopefully not for long I should probably give it a spray as well actually oh it just looks so glossy and beautiful like those leaves are just amazing I love how ruffly they are I really do love the Anastia I think it's such an underrated plant and it's still like I wouldn't I, I don't like to put things in kind of like the rare category but it's definitely not one that you see every day in the UK the only one that I've seen that is like incredible is um Sydney plant guys one he just has the most amazing plants doesn't he but his is ginormous and Again, the form of the plant really changes when it's big and I'd love mine to get to that stage. I've chopped it up so many times, it is still at a, ver a very kind of juvenile stage at the moment, but oh God, one day that would be amazing. Oh God, I've just found more mealybugs. Oh, I was just looking at my Anthurium bulletus and I was like, this leaf looks like it's getting ready to go and just looked at the back of it and I can see mealybugs. Um, so that leaf, I mean, as, as I say, I'm pretty sure it was on its way out anyway, so I'm gonna chop that. Um, oh, they're so disgusting. I really hate mealybugs so much. And I feel like because that one was right up against other plants, I'm probably gonna have to check that whole area. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do with this one I can't see any more mealy bugs on this plant, but I'm not going to assume they're not there, especially since it's in moss. They could be in the moss. I'm going to use up the last little bit of this water and then I'm going to rinse this bowl out just to make sure that I'm not potentially spreading anything. <sighs> and then I guess that's another one that should probably have a big wash off. I'm going to be doing a lot of washing. So I've just given everything in that area a little look over and I can't see any more mealy bugs, but obviously they're so good at getting inside crevices. Uh, so I feel like I'm, I'm, I've am i just done like an initial look. I'm probably gonna have to take some time this evening, probably off camera, cause it's not gonna be very interesting and just go through and check everything um, and potentially treat some more plants. But I'm hoping that they could just be like little anomalies. Where do mealy bugs come from? That's what I wanna know because they're so big and gross and like, I kind of get it with thrips cause they like can crawl in or they can get stuck to your clothes. Maybe it's the same with mealy bugs. I don't know if anybody knows. Um, but I thought I would just give you quite an exciting update on my Alocasia portadora because if you remember this used to be, this plant used to be like bigger than me, it was ginormous and I stored the bulbs and the tubers over winter and chopped the whole plant back just because I'd had such an ongoing battle with pests with this plant and then I gave, in fact I've given both of my other big corms away. I gave one to Sarah who's the plant rescuer and I gave one to Emma, good growing, um, and both of them are growing sections of this plant but this one in the time that I've planted it up has given me two fairly big new leaves. I obviously know that they're capable of reaching like the size of me but I'm hoping that as summer comes this one's gonna really perk up and maybe even get back to the stage that it was at before I can see it is actually just starting to give me another new leaf which makes me really 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 happy so yeah fingers crossed for this plant the second time around and I will absolutely keep you updated with it um, but yeah right okay I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna change up this water give the bowl a, a sterilize and just find a spot to isolate all of these other plants so that they don't have to be up against my others and hope that it's fine. So I've just actually peeled back some of the older leaves at the bottom of this plant and there's two bits that are kind of baffling me. There's this bit here, like what is that? <laughs> um, and there's also this little bit which I'm pretty sure is a new growth point. And the only reason that this is, because I know alocasia can do this, but the only reason that this is really surprising me is just because, as I say previously, I had three of these huge corms that made up the plant and it never did this. 
I don't know if it's because I chopped it all the way back, but yeah, look at that. Like, I don't know if it's going to start sprouting a whole new big plant from those points from just one corn, but has anyone ever seen this before in this type of plant? This is an Alocasia portadora. Um, yeah, I've just never seen it and it's making me very excited. So I've decided that for my Anthurium bulletus, just because it is currently in moss, obviously it's not ideal to be finding mealybugs right before I go away, but I do think just because it's got a fairly well established root system, I do think that I should probably change out the moss. I've just hydrated it, so this is going to be a little bit messy. Um, but then at least while I'm away, I won't have to worry about mealybugs potentially being in the moss. Uh, can't see any at just first glance, but I'm going to just get right in there, get all of the moss off, give the roots a wash, and then I'm going to pot it up in soil. Wow, these roots are so much bigger than I thought they were going to be. Like, considering that that's now the only foliage it's supporting, look at that root system. I really want to ideally get like literally all of the moss off it, but as you all know, if you grow in moss, it can be very difficult. Also because this moss was mixed with perlite, I keep thinking that I'm finding mealybugs. Um, touch wood so far I haven't seen any at all so this is literally just a precaution but I do love this plant and I'm so excited about it it is one of my collection that although at the moment it doesn't look like much I'm so excited by its potential so I really want to make sure that nothing happens to it um but right it goes without saying that I am not going to be reusing that moss for anything um, and I'm actually just going to give these roots a little rinse off try and get a little bit more sphagnum off if I possibly can uh, I think actually I could go in with the same pot again so I'm going to need to just I'll probably give that a spritz out with hydrogen peroxide give it a rinse and then yeah and then I think we'll be good okay everything's had a rinse and a clean um, and I'm actually out of bark, which is annoying because I usually like doing quite a barky mix for anthuriums. But I've got, I think this might have a little bit of bark in it, but this is just uh, mixed in a bag of soil ninjas. Oh, it's base mix. Um, but base mix, it's got some lecker in there. Um, it's got horticultural charcoal. It's got, what else has it got in there? Maybe that's it. I think maybe that's it. Um, and I am actually just going to put a little bit of lacquer at the bottom of the pot so it doesn't all fall through. Yeah, and I think this should be absolutely fine for this plant. I know I literally said at the beginning of the video about not doing like potting up or repotting before going away. Uh, I didn't particularly want to be doing this today, but I just think it's better to take the risk of that than to come back and find that because mealy bugs can get around the roots of your plants as well and they are the worst. So I feel like this is the best decision to be made. go I'm going to give it another water through and as I say my mealy buggy plants mealy buggy plants I'm going to try and keep isolated as much as I possibly can from my other plants so that if there are any eggs or mealy bugs that I haven't seen lurking then it's not going to affect the rest of my plants it's not going to spread um, but I'm looking at the two plants that I took off the fridge at the beginning of this video the begonia and the fern and I'm just going to go and try and find a spot for them in my bedroom to clear some room in here. So I think just for now, I've just been having a play about, but I think I'm gonna put the blue star fern there because it doesn't get particularly high light. All of the light it gets is kind of indirect. As I say, the humidity is fairly good in here and 
I think it should be happy just for the time being. I'm obviously just experimenting and figuring out where the best spot's gonna be for it. But I think, I think that should be fine. Um, and then I've put my begonia just for the time being up here on this shelf. Oh dear, just seen a water propagation that, oh dear, bad plant parent. I've let completely dry out and now it's dying. Right, another thing to deal with. Um, but yes, I've put it just up there because I think, again, lighting-wise, it's going to be happy. It's a process of trial and error, but I think that's going to do it better. And it is just generally cooler in my bedroom. So I think I think that should be good for now. Oh, also, just noticed a nice little new variegated monstera leaf. Oh, in fact, two coming up there. But yeah, right, okay. That's where I'm leaving those plants for the time being. And this is just classic me. I'm working in the world's weirdest order. I was going to carry on going around that side of the room, but I couldn't negotiate the tripod situation. So I thought I would just start getting into my cabinet and work anti-clockwise because I know that there's a lot of stuff in here that does need doing. As I say, I'm going to put some blue sticky traps in here before I go because I know that there are, I don't know if there still are, but there were some thrips. I tried to get as many whoa, as many as I possibly could. And I have got predatory mite sachets in here for the younger ones. Um, but I'm just kind of gonna give everything a really good look over. So this is my philodendron painted lady and she's doing okay. She had that weird little leaf there, which I thought could be pest related, but I didn't actually see any thrips on this plant. She has since given me a beautiful new leaf and on the whole, she's doing very well. She's got some amazing aerial roots in her moss pole. However, her moss pole is very, very dry. And one thing I'm actually thinking of doing, I mean, the Millsbow cabinet is amazing at containing humidity, but I'm kind of thinking that, I'm just gonna put my watering station in front of me. Um, I'm kind of thinking that I might at some point get a shower seal like I did on my other cabinet and just kind of contain, contain it a little bit more because, when I first water in my cabinet, the humidity is at like 80 or 90. Put the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Um, the humidity can go to like 80 or 90%. It's absolutely amazing. But after a few days, I notice that humidity really does drop. And I don't use a humidifier in my cabinet at the moment. I'm just kind of relying on the contained space creating humidity. And it's working really well for my other cabinet where I did use the shower seal. So that's kind of why I'm thinking of doing it. I know a lot of people don't do that, but I think it's probably going to be an option. So that's another thing to add to my list when I get back from holiday. But yeah, obviously, I think I'm just going to kind of assume that everything in my cabinet has been affected by thrips just because it is a contained space and I did find them in there. Um, I've given everything, within the last week, I've given everything a really good wash off with the horticultural soap, which is that stuff there. It's really great stuff. But if I see any more in here today, I might need to put some aside. I mean, really, I should do the whole lot again. I will try and get through as much as I possibly can, but I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do all of them because I've got so many plants and things I need to do before I go away and I just kind of feel like I'm running out of time a little bit. But okay, first plant looks good, which is positive, which is really, really positive. Um, and then the weird Anthurium silver blush, not a silver blush. This one, again, I haven't seen any pests on this one. As you can see, some of its leaves are yellowing just a little bit. And in fact, I'm just gonna grab my scissors because I feel like I might need to do some pruning. But yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna take that leaf off just because I don't see it bouncing back. And then the other ones with the brown tips, I could, I mean, just, Aesthetically, I could trim round those browning tips, but for now, I'm not gonna be here. I'm not gonna see them. It doesn't really bother me. I'm just gonna give it a water as well. It's in terracotta, so it does dry out quite quickly. But yeah, I just really like doing my watering this way. I know a lot of people have said that it must be so much effort, but because I can bring my little washing up bowl like around with me, it doesn't really feel like that much effort. And I just, I, I, I don't know, like it just feels like I'm more 
in a way like more in touch with my plants than the ones that I do just water in situ. Like I like being able to like pick them up and have a proper check over them and just see what's going on with them. So yeah, I like doing it like this. And this is, this is a plant, this is my Philodendron Parezo Verde. And I just don't really know how I'm feeling about this one. I know this is, wasn't going to be like a full plant updates video, but um, again, I think it looks okay pest wise. Um, but it's growing, growing nicely for me, but it just hasn't like, I don't know, it hasn't got any of the lovely variegation that I was hoping for. I know a lot of you have said that's down to heat. The heat in my cabinet currently is 26 degrees Celsius. I mean, that is warm. That's seriously warm. It's got good light. I feel like I've struck a good balance with watering. Again, I do need to do its moss pole, but look at the aerial roots on the back of that. They're amazing. So yeah, I'm I'm just not quite sure why it's not why it's not giving me a little bit more. Um, and I know that these plants can be a little bit of a challenge in that sense. I did hear from quite a few people before I got this plant that they can be a little bit unpredictable. Sometimes the variegation does just go, it can come back. But I think at the moment, just being like brutally honest, I'm just not finding it that rewarding to grow. Like I think it looks very similar to the the one that I thought was a Billetier hybrid, which I think is actually a Kera. I'll, I'll put a clip in a bit because I can't remember. Um, but I, yeah, I, I can't remember the name of that one, but it is another philodendron. Um, it looks very similar to that. And whilst this one isn't doing a lot for me, I'm kind of thinking, do I need both of them in my collection? Should I get rid of one? Should I even pop them together? Like that could be an option. But then I know the potential of this plant and I'd like to think that at some point it will start doing amazing things for me because yeah it just doesn't really feel like I've got a Parezo Verde in my collection currently because it's not doing what I hoped it to but apart from that I think the plant is healthy like it hasn't really given me any grief as I say despite being in the thrifty cabinet I can't see any thrips at all which is really good thought I just saw on them but I think that's just a bit of moss um but yeah I'm kind of glad that I'm well I'm very glad that I'm not seeing loads of thrips in here I did really think that I might have to treat everything <laughs> that was a funny noisy leaf <laughs> um and my ficus chivariana as well this one I mean it's given me new growth from the time that I've had it it's obviously quite a slow grower but the most recent leaf, I don't know if it's losing its variegation, but it looks very, very dark. And I have seen some people that have this plant and it almost just returns to looking like a standard rubber plant. So, I mean, if it kept the balance of variegation and had some green leaves, I don't think I'd be too upset about it. I think that would actually look quite cool. But at the moment, I'm just not quite sure what it's doing. Has anyone else had this? But yeah, I just love the light kind of <laughs> moonshiny leaves. I think they're just beautiful and I would be very sad if it was reversing. And this is the Caladium, which is losing a leaf, the Caladium Hilo Beauty. This is one of the ones that I got in the rescue box that I unboxed with Sarah, the plant rescuer. And I said before that, that I'm not a massive Caladium person. Like I have no desire to have Caladiums in my collection really I, I don't know why they just don't usually grab me but the foliage of this one I think is just so stunning and I'm really enjoying growing it as well I'm actually quite surprised that it hasn't hasn't died back I know it is in a cabinet environment but they do tend to be seasonal plants and technically at this time of year it shouldn't really still be growing but you can see at the bottom there I trimmed it right back and it has got a new little leaf coming so yeah, this is another one. It doesn't actually need a water yet. So I think I'm gonna have to wait and water this one literally just before I go, which is a little bit stressful. I like being able to do everything kind of in one hit if I possibly can. Um, obviously plants don't work like that, but it would be ideal if I could do it that way. But again, it doesn't look to have any pests. 
And oh my goodness, this one is just climbing the back walls. I need to pop this up and I need to get it on a trellis. This is the this is the Hoya latifolia that I got at the last plant swap. And as you can see, it's grown an insane amount. And I think the shape of its leaves are just so beautiful. And on the whole, I don't want to jinx things, but on the whole with Hoyas, apart from mealybugs, I don't think I've ever suffered with pests on them. Like I'm giving it a check just kind of because I feel I should, but I've never had spider mites. I've never had thrips. I think you'd probably be more likely to see them on the young leaves because they're not quite so robust. But on the whole, it's always been fine. Um, and I've got this one just in moss at the moment. And again, the moss doesn't really need hydrating just yet. So maybe the plants that need, that are gonna need taking out again, I'll put to one side. Hmm. All of this is just me thinking out loud, by the way. I do this in my own head if I'm not filming, so just gonna have to bear with me <laughs> and I had something in moss here and I don't know what it was and the moss is very dry but I'm gonna give it a water anyway I genuinely don't know what this was I also just shoved it at the back of the cabinet and hoped for the best and then this this is really sad this hmm, is my philodendron yopii which was doing it so well and was starting to give me really quite big leaves but I, um, it, it got thripped, it got thripped so badly to the point that I was like, I'm gonna have to chop it back. There's not a lot of point in keeping the growth that it's got because it's just so unhealthy. So it lost pretty much all of its leaves and um, yeah, has been out of the cabinet for a couple of months and I only put it back in recently. So I hope it bounces back. I see no reason why it won't because I checked its roots and its roots are really healthy and it does have a little growth point just there at the top, but yeah it's just it's such a shame especially when you've got like a younger plant or a plant that you've grown from very small and you see it start to do really amazing exciting things and then something gets in the way like pests and you kind of feel like you're backtracking like i was so i did not want to chop that plant at all but i just felt like it was the right decision um and this one's also doing really well tempted to give this one a chop at some point I mean I do I know I also do need to trellis it but this is the one that I was sold as a macrophylla red and I'm pretty sure it's just a standard macrophylla but it's I mean it's huge it's absolutely huge and again I think probably could do with a repot um oh there's some webbing down there what is that yeah I can see just some fine webbing Oh no, it's just a little spider, which in fact I'm going to leave on the plants because that's like built in pest control. I'm going to let that one live on that plant um, and that one doesn't need a water and I'm probably not going to worry too much about that one because it is very drought tolerant. So I think I'll probably just let it do its thing and I'll water it when it's back. Um, but this one was my Anthurium my anthurium limon and i chopped this one up it's propagating and it's rooting really nicely i just i wasn't having much luck growing it this way and uh, again the pole's very dry but i left a couple of sections on the pole so they do both have growth points i'm hoping that it might give me some more growth at some point and then i can kind of have a couple of options because this is a plant that i think i said it at the time i just feel like I don't know it very well. Like I don't really feel like I know what I'm doing with it yet. And when things are going wrong and I feel like I can't predict the growth pattern of the plants and I can't really understand what I'm doing wrong, I quite like often to chop it up and start again and try it in different conditions, try doing things different ways and try and figure it out that way. And this is another one that I could say exactly the same about. And is that a thrip? Oh, it's not moving, but it looks very thrip-like. Um, but no, this is the Epipremnum skeleton key, and I have never been able to get this plant to key. And I know people say, try it on a moss pole. I've done that. Try it on a plank. I've tried that. I've literally tried everything with this plant, and it just, it, it just looks like that. And I mean, I think that's very nice, but 
it's it's not the reason I own the plant. So I think I'm probably going to take quite a lot of cuttings of this one to the plant swap. Um, I like it, but it grows like a weed and I've got lots of sections of it. So I'm not, I don't feel that precious about it, to be honest. In fact, the mother plant is one that I might take to the plant swap just because I, I don't feel like I need loads of them in my collection. I was going to say as well, this is how I hydrate the moss. I literally fill it all the way up to the top with water and then I just pour the water out when the moss is hydrated. And this one was already slightly hydrated, so it doesn't need too much. Oh, and here's another one that I'm definitely going to be taking to the plant swap because I just don't like it very much. This is the philodendron... Oh my goodness, what's going on with my brain today? I'll put the name on the screen. The philodendron that looks like the mycans, but not is not a mycans. And it has huge potential. I know what it looks like when it's mature. I know I should probably get it on a pole. I just don't have the motivation to do it. And I didn't actually buy this plant for myself. This was very kindly given to me by Emma because she was feeling the same way about it. And I really thought that I might fall in love with it and it just hasn't happened. And I know a lot of people do love this plant and while it's not bringing me joy, it may as well make them happy. So yeah, this is a definite plant swap one. And again, I can't see any pests. This is such a relief. I was genuinely expecting to go into my cabinet and find like thrips galore in here. And at the moment, I haven't so far seen any. Um, this is a Hoya polyneura. This is one that I propagated. Doing okay, but I have just let it dry out too much. So I'm gonna leave the water in the cup to just soak for a minute because as you can see towards the end, it's just looking very dehydrated and not very happy. Um, and then I've just got a couple here, which, oh, another begonia that's not doing well. This is, I think, a begonia snow, a snow cap or snow queen or something like that. It's very beautiful, but I just don't have much luck with begonias. I know I always say it, but it just never seems to be happy. And maybe the cabinet's not the best place for it. Maybe it's not, but... Again, most of the begonias that I've got are ones that have been given to me. I haven't gone out and bought them for myself because firstly, I know I'm not great with them. And secondly, I just am not a huge begonia person. I don't know why, I am just not. Uh, but I feel like that one, again, I should probably pass along to another home. I really don't think it's a bad thing to do that as well. Like. I never claim to be like the perfect plant parent. There is always stuff, as you can see, going on with my collection. Got some more dead leaves here. It like, nothing is ever perfect, even when I'm kind of happy overall with how everything is. I don't think I'm ever like, oh wow, everything's just so perfect at the moment. There's always issues. And when a plant's not making me totally happy, then I'm like, why, why am I keeping on going with it? Like, what am I, I'm just trying to prove something to myself. And a lot of the time, I'm just like, you don't have to do that. Oh, I've just remembered what this one's called as well. It's called the Philodendron Lupinum. That's what it's called. Uh, but apart from that, the only other one on the bottom layer of my cabinet currently is this Scandapsis that I, again, got as a cutting at the plant swap and it hasn't died back, but I don't think it's rooted. It's been six months and I'm just continuing to keep the moss hydrated and hoping that at some point it'll perk up and it'll start doing something, but so far it's just looking very curly and not very happy so yeah i'm plowing on through with it and i'm hoping that at some point it will start doing something for me i have got this type of skin that's already in my collection so it's not the end of the world but i just when i saw the big leaf which you can't really appreciate now that it's so curly but that leaf is huge it just made me really excited and i wanted to get a bigger one going However, it's taking a very long time. But yeah, right, I'm gonna put everything back in here because that's the bottom layer done. I don't think, I think if I put the blue sticky traps in here, I don't think I'm gonna need to do another pest treatment of that level at least because everything looked fine. I couldn't see any pests. I couldn't see any signs of pest damage besides what I've already seen that I know is there. Um, and while I'm trying to whiz through a lot today and tomorrow, like 
a lot of plant care. I think that's something that I'm probably not gonna do. Oh, maybe I'll come back to that. Obviously, if I see anything, if I see any cause for concern, then I will pest treat, but I think with the blue sticky traps, they should kind of do the job. But yeah, I'm gonna work my way. In fact, I'm trying to think how long I've been filming for. I've still got obviously the top layer of my cabinet to do and a lot of other things to do as well. Um, but I'm aware that this is probably quite a long video. So what I will probably do is I'll probably carry this on over on Patreon. If you're on my Patreon, then head over there and this video will continue. Um, if you're not on my Patreon, I'll leave the details below if you fancy it. And if you don't, that's absolutely fine as well. I will see you in the next video. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this style of video. It's been, I guess, quite different to what I usually do. But I mean, it's been the loveliest thing in the world because I've just been doing planty things as I normally would and chatting to you guys at the same time. So if you want more of this sort of thing, let me know. I'll happily make it. I do stuff like this on almost a daily basis. So it would be lovely to share it a bit more. Um, but yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.